So my friend, Sean Boyd, who you guys know, has some really cool furniture plans on his website. And I was over there the other day and he was cutting some of the templates that he sells uh, for this rocking chair out by hand. He was using the original template he made and just routing these things on the router table. Um, and of course, like any person who hasn't used a CNC, I said, well, why don't you just cut it on the CNC? I mean, he made this face that of course we all make when someone says that because it takes a million years to design something in, in Fusion and then transfer it over to your CNC and cut it out and work out the kinks. That got me thinking, there's gotta be a way to cut something larger than your CNC easily and efficiently. So we worked yesterday and Sean and I came up with this method and granted we are both new to Fusion, we're new to CAD. I've had a CNC for maybe six months and I've only been using Fusion for four or five, same with Sean, and, but we've both learned a lot. And going through this exercise yesterday, I feel like we learned a tremendous amount and I wanted to share this with you. And this may not be something that, you, you may not have a CNC, but some of these techniques are great for doing uh, large template routing and that kind of thing, just the, the concepts involved. Uh, but this is something that will work for any CNC, anything where you can set your home in a corner of the machine. So the X-Carve, the Shepoko, uh, mine, which is an Axiom, which is a great machine. I'll leave a link down to that in the description. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through the process. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and import our template, or of course you could draw it into Fusion yourself. And we are going to import the rear leg here, which is one of the pieces that is way too big for the CNC, so Sean was cutting out by hand. So now that we've imported our SVG, we're gonna go ahead and draw out our stock. Now this is the size of the MDF board we're gonna use. And again, this comes from maybe my ignorance in Fusion, but also coming from probably the same place you are, unless you're a CAD expert. Uh, this is a way to create stock in Fusion that is the exact same piece as your board which also allows you some easy ways to place parts. So, so we're gonna start by drawing our stock, including the safe space where we can place our templates. I'm gonna put holes one inch from the bottom corners. Uh, I'm making these eight millimeters so that they are slightly larger than my pin, which is 0.3125 inches. And that'll give my pin some breathing room so it's not impossible to pull in and out when we make these holes. And then, from there, I'm gonna draw a line that's 24 inches away. And the reason that it's 24 inches is because this is the distance that our stock is going to move when we change the origin for cutting the second parts of the templates. So we draw these circles at eight millimeters, delete our lines, and now we're gonna draw the inside safe space. This is an arbitrary rectangle. It's only so that I can extrude the part because again, I'm not a fusion expert. So this was the way that I found to quickly do it. And then we're gonna extrude that to the thickness of our material, which is 0.515 inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and import our template using the SVG importer, which is the rear leg. And then I'm gonna go ahead and extrude that to our material thickness at 0.515 inches and move it into place. Um, I'm gonna start by creating a couple components, which makes these much easier to move and deal with uh, and copy. So we're gonna move it into place, then create two more to fill out the space and make sure that they're arranged in a way that's gonna fit. And the reason I like drawing that center rectangle is it's like a safe space for putting your template. So you know that you're not gonna crash into your pins if your uh, machine's doing a rapid movement. So once we get those all in there, uh, we can go into our manufacturer workspace and create the G-code. Okay, so in our G-code workspace here, also called manufacturer, we're gonna do our first setup. Now it's important to put your origin in the bottom left-hand corner, and that's where your CNC machine is gonna stay the whole time, and we're only gonna move this in our second setup. So our first toolpath is a 2D bore toolpath. It's a really simple toolpath for creating holes. We're gonna pick our bit, which is a quarter inch down cut bit. Uh, and then we're gonna select the bottom two holes on our material. Now this is going to be your spoils board toolpath. You're gonna to cut that into the spoils board. Then we're gonna rebore our holes and reset our Z height to our material thickness and cut all four holes into our material. And then from there, we're going to go back to our model workspace and draw a sketch of a rectangle that will be our limiting area for our first toolpath cutting out our templates. And it's important to draw it above your locating pins. I go two or three inches above my locating pins. And then we go back into our 2D workspace and we do a contour toolpath. We select our three templates 
And then this is where the magic happens. Uh, you go to stock contours and select that square that you sketch and that's gonna limit the toolpath to that area. Check it out here. So you're gonna see that it will not go over that line. In fact, if I simulate it here, you can see that it won't cross that line and it obviously won't cut your templates in half. So now this is the part where you're gonna move your board down to the second set of pinholes. So you're gonna move those down to the pins that are in the uh, bottom of your spoils board. Okay, and now we're gonna post-process those three toolpaths. Uh, I like to save them as like step one, step two, step three. And that way you can later when you're looking at your job sheet or whatever you use that you take over to the CNC with you, uh, you can use that to make sure you're doing things in the correct order. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna go to our second setup and this is where you move the origin to the middle left-hand side of your board. And that's why, and because our board's 48 inches, our origin moved 24 inches. So we're gonna go back and draw another rectangle in our sketch here uh, that comes down from the top and overlaps that previous rectangle. You wanna overlap by a couple inches. Again, kind of arbitrary, you just wanna give it enough room to cut. And then we're gonna go back into our manufacturer workspace and do our last toolpath. And remember, we have moved our board on the pins here. Uh, we're gonna select those 2D contours again go stock contours, select the t uh, second rectangle. Oh, don't forget to put tabs in your work, otherwise you'll have templates flying all over the place. And then you can see here, uh, we'll simulate this, and it cuts the second half of your boards. And because you've used those locating pins, it's gonna do it in the perfect location. Um, we found that occasionally we'd have to like do one pass with a piece of sandpaper to get off a little nubbin, but other than that, it was good to go. So we'll post-process that and head over to the CNC machine. Forgot to mention is the pin stock. So here's the brass pin stock that I'm using and you can see that it's 0.3125. Um, so I cut these so that they're long enough that they barely stick through my material so you're not worried about uh, your retract height on your bit so your bit's not gonna crash into these. And then I just took some sandpaper or a file and rounded over the edges so they're not sharp. So these are what we're gonna use for our locating pins. We're gonna start by putting in our quarter inch bit here. Um, this is the bit that I use for cutting the CNC dovetail alignment boards as well as kind of my go-to bit. I'll leave a link down in the description. The white side bits, the little red caps that come on the cylinder for them are great for putting on the screw in your hold down clamp so that doesn't catch anything and scratch it. Just a little side pro tip there. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the first tool path, which is those two holes that's gonna be in your spoils board. So the first trick is you need to set your X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna, because we set it in the bottom left-hand corner, we're gonna move our machine to the bottom left-hand corner and hit X, Y, zero. And that's where we're gonna zero it out. There we go. And that home position is gonna be the home position for every tool path. And the reason is that even though that we set in that fourth tool pass, we set our home position in the middle of our board, we're moving that middle of the board down to the home position and not changing the home position to the middle of the board. Now we're gonna go ahead and set our Z for the spoils board. And remember, we're gonna have to reset that for our next three tool pass to the height of the MDF, but this is the spoil board pass, so we're gonna set that. There we go. So now we're gonna go ahead and run the spoil board tool path. We're gonna go into CNC video here. Vid one. We're going to cut the second tool path, which is gonna be the four pinholes in our template board. Now, what I'm gonna do, because this is the same width as my CNC, and I know that my spoil board is a little bit wider than it can cut, I'm gonna make sure it's sort of centered on the spoil boards here. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down, making sure to stay away from where my hole is going to be cut and also the travel of my bit, which you saw when it was doing those holes is gonna come real close through here. And then once this is secured here, we're gonna drill out our four holes, which will be used for locating this board. And before we cut the first half of our templates, we're gonna move this so that the pinholes line up and we're gonna put the pins in. So now that we have our board secured to the bed of the CNC, it's important to remember that you need to reset your Z height to your spoils board. Good little tip when you're doing CNC stuff and setting your Z height, you wanna do it in a place where the clamp is so that your board is completely down to your spoils board and that'll help you get really good results on a lot of projects. So now we're gonna run our pinhole toolpath. Now 
now that we've drilled out our four locating holes, it's time to locate it. So we're gonna go ahead and put our pins in and make sure they line up with our holes there. Then we're just gonna go ahead and tap those in. Now we're gonna secure our board and we're gonna run our third tool path, which is gonna cut out the first half of these templates. And then from there, we're gonna move the board from the second locating holes down to here and run the fourth tool path and we'll be done. This is the reason I really like to print out uh, the setup sheet for these because then I can look at this when I'm putting on the clamps and make sure there's gonna be no time that I run into my pieces here. So I'm gonna, it looks like I can put a clamp anywhere down this side unless it's near where the, the pin is. And then here I wanna stay low and high on this side. So it's a good little tip for work holding. guys it really is not that hard and there's a way if you're doing 3d tool pass to do that as well it's under stock to leave tab but this is a great way to cut templates of any size or if you have a uh, live edge slab that you're trying to surface and your CNC is too small or that you're trying to route some big sign or something like that this is a great way to do it and it really was easy and just for all you CNC noobs out there if when you ever think like oh just go cut it on your CNC this took Sean and I I had way too many hours to figure out yesterday. So that's why we wanted to make a video because honestly, I wanted you to know how I figured it out so you didn't spend hours trying to figure it out like uh, we did yesterday. Um, hey, if you're new here, please subscribe. I know this is maybe a little bit different content than I usually do, but uh, we do a lot of great woodworking and we'd love to have you. So thanks for watching guys. Stay safe in the shop and I'll see you soon. Last time I ever helped you, Sean,